Hello boys and girls, this is Miss Reese. I am a first grade teacher and I am also a STEM educator at Idaho National Laboratory. For today's STEM story read aloud, I have selected my favorite children's book for you. And my favorite children's book is called, What Do You Do With An Idea? And this story is written by Kobe Yamada and illustrated by Mae Besom. And the author and illustrator have also written and illustrated other books similar to this one. This book that I have selected is my favorite though because as an educator, I love asking my students questions. And you can notice that the title of this story is indeed a question. I'm going to go ahead and read it to you again. What do you do with an idea? And this story is going to ask lots of questions. And these questions are special questions. They're open-ended questions. So they're questions that are not meant to be answered like that. These questions are meant to make you think and to keep those wheels turning. And as an educator, I know that questions can help lead you to some magnificent ideas and masterpieces. And who knows, maybe one day you'll become a teacher or maybe an engineer or a material scientist at Idaho National Laboratory. Um, but on your journey to discovering what you want to do when you grow up, you will be asking yourself lots of questions like in this story. So I hope you enjoy this. There are beautiful illustrations. And after this story, I have a really fun and cool hands-on engineer challenge for you. So let's go ahead and get started. One day I had an idea. Where did it come from? Why is it here? I wondered, what do you do with an idea? Have you ever had an idea? What did you do about it? Did you make a picture of it? Did you write it down in a journal? Maybe you tried designing it or building it. Or perhaps you just told someone about it. Let's see what this little boy does about his idea. At first, I didn't think much of it. It seemed kind of strange and fragile. I didn't know what to do with it. So I just walked away from it. I acted like it didn't belong to me. Hmm. But it followed me. I worried about what others would think. What would people say about my idea? I kept it to myself. I hid it away and I didn't talk about it. I tried to act like everything was the same as it was before my idea showed up. Maybe you can relate to this little boy. Perhaps you've been in school before and your teachers asked a question and you knew the answer or you wanted to share your thoughts and ideas, but you were really nervous and worried about what other kids might think about it. Or you were a little nervous that you might answer the question wrong. It's okay to be nervous sometimes and shy like this little boy, but I hope he becomes a little bit more brave and confident. Do you think he's going to become more brave and confident? Let's find out. But there was something magical about my idea. I had to admit, I felt better and happier when it was around. Take a look at this picture. So the illustrator, the person that designs and creates the pictures for a story, represented the little boy's idea as an egg with a crown and some silly funky legs here. It looks like maybe they're ostrich legs or maybe chicken legs. I'm not sure. But she designed the little boy's idea to look like this. If you were the illustrator of this story, how would you make the little boy's idea look? Would it look the same or do you think you would make it maybe a snowman? Or maybe you would want to make it a really beautiful snowflake? What would you want it to look like? That was just a creative question for you. Let's keep on going. It wanted food. It wanted to play. Actually, it wanted a lot of attention. It grew bigger and we became friends. How cute that picture is. Okay, in a little bit, I'm going to have you pause the story for a fun activity. 
I want you in a little bit to make an egg friend, just like how this little boy is best friends with his idea, which is an egg in this story. So I want you to go into your refrigerator and find one or two eggs. And I want you to make your egg your best friend. I want you to draw a face on it. Maybe you could add some hair. You can make a little crown. You could make some fun feet for it or fun legs using Q-tips or popsicle sticks or whatever creative thing you can find in your home. But I want you to invent a little friend using an egg. Ready? Set, go. Welcome back to the story. Let me see your egg friend. Oh, it turned out so cute. I hope you gave it a fantastic and unique name. And you can keep your little egg friend with you. Now, if you have somebody at home that could help you later, maybe somebody could teach you how to make a hard boiled egg and then you won't have to keep your little egg friend in the refrigerator all the time, okay? All right, let's go ahead and continue the story. I showed it to other people even though I was afraid of what they would say. I was afraid that if people saw it, they would laugh at it. I was afraid they would think it was silly. And many of them did. They said it was no good. They said it was too weird. They said it was a waste of time and that it would never become anything. Poor little boy. Now, this might happen to you sometimes in life, and that's okay. Sometimes people aren't always going to like your idea or think it's a good one, but it's up to you to keep trying and working on it. Let's see what the little boy does. And at first, I believed them. I actually thought about giving up on my idea. I almost listened to them. But then I realized, what do they really know? This is my idea, I thought. No one knows it like I do. And it's okay if it's different and weird and maybe even a little crazy. I decided to protect it, to care for it. I fed it good food, I worked with it, I played with it, but most of all, I gave it my attention. What do you think happens when you love something and you keep working on it and you keep trying with it? It probably turns into something magical, right? Let's see what the little boy's idea turns into. And my idea grew and grew and so did my love for it. I love that picture, it's so sweet. I built it a new house, one with an open roof where I could look up at the stars, a place where it could be safe to dream. Maybe this is something you could do tonight if it's a clear night. You could go outside in your backyard or maybe you have a patio or a deck you could go out to and look up at the stars in the sky. And I want you to think about some of the ideas that you've had and I want you to dream about them while looking at the stars. And if you live in Idaho, oh my goodness, the stars in Idaho are beautiful. So I hope you get to do that tonight. I liked being with my idea. It made me feel more alive, like I could do anything. It encouraged me to think big and then to think bigger. It shared its secrets with me. It showed me how to walk on my hands because it said, it is good to have the ability to see things differently. Can you walk on your hands like the egg and the little boy? I could not imagine my life without it. Then one day, something amazing happened. My idea changed right before my very eyes. It spread its wings, it took flight, and it burst into the sky. Look, his egg flew, spread its wings, and just burst. Look how bright and sunny and beautiful. The illustrations are so colorful. I don't know how to describe it, but it went from being here to being everywhere. It wasn't just a part of me anymore. It was now a part of everything. A 
And then I realized what you do with an idea, you change the world. And you can see that the little boy's idea turned into himself. Look, he's now wearing the crown. And that is the end of the story. I love this children's book because it teaches you, like I mentioned earlier, about how important asking questions are and thinking about questions and to keep having grit, to not give up on those ideas and to keep trying because you are the future. You could change the world. Now, if you would like an engineer challenge to go along with this story, I have a really fun hands-on challenge for you. You will need some eggs and some other materials from home, but I hope you enjoy it and have a lot of fun. Thank you for listening. Welcome back, boys and girls. Earlier, I had mentioned that we were going to have an engineer challenge and we definitely will. We're going to get to that very soon, but I wanted to discuss with you the goal behind our engineer project as well as about engineers. So to go along with our story that we read, what do you do with an idea? I have selected an awesome engineer project for you. I am using the How to Be an Engineer book. This is a fantastic STEM book to have in your home if you're interested. It's full of colorful photographs and kid-friendly hands-on STEM activities. And there's even little fact paragraphs and snippets throughout the book as well as explaining the science behind each project. So using this book, I have selected the egg drop challenge. This is what your engineer challenge is going to be in your engineer project for the day. So the reason why I selected the egg drop challenge was because in our story, what do you do with an idea? The illustrator represents the little boy's idea as an egg in the very beginning of the story. And I thought, what better engineer challenge than an egg drop challenge? Because you have to use an egg for this. And so the goal, are you ready for it? The goal for this engineer project is you want to keep your egg safe because you're going to drop your egg dropper three times in a row and you want your egg to be safe, still intact, and you do not want it to crack. So you get to be the engineer for this. You get to lead this project. I'm just here to help guide you and to give you some ideas and you'll see my ideas and some materials that you can gather at home in a little bit for this project. So you'll have to use your critical thinking skills for this. You will have to use the engineer design process and I hope you really have a awesome time putting it together. I sure did, it was so much fun and you'll see that in a little bit. But before we move on to the hands-on part of this, I wanted to explain what an engineer does. And I also wanted to bring out the STEM Help Wanted book. This is an awesome book. It's full of really great facts and information about Idaho National Laboratory's careers. So when you're thinking about, hmm, what do I want to be when I grow up? Or if you're thinking about, oh, I love using my hands and the critical thinking process and really working on projects and making things and building things. So perhaps you could take those skills later in life and be an engineer. And we will need many more engineers in our future and you are our future. So I'm going to share with you some of the engineer positions at Idaho National Laboratory. These books we pass out for free during Idaho National Laboratory outreach events and programs. So perhaps you already have one at home that you could get out and look with your family. But we have electrical engineers. It tells you how much this career makes. It discusses the job for you. We also have mechanical engineers. We have nuclear engineers and we have power engineers. There are many different types of engineering jobs and I'm sure there's more. I just selected these few to share with you. I'm gonna read a little bit about the nuclear engineer. A nuclear engineer applies the principles of nuclear physics to design, construct, and operate systems such as nuclear power plants that involve radiation and nuclear reactions. 
This career would be a good fit for you if you have a strong foundation in math, science, and physics. So if you like math and science, are interested in energy and alternative energy, are a creative problem solver, I'm a teacher, I know lots of you are creative problem solvers, and want to lead research in the field. So you can see that awesome picture there of some nuclear engineers at Idaho National Laboratory. I selected this one because I find these jobs fascinating when I had a tour of the lab, and I think you would too. So if you are interested in a STEM Help Wanted guide, you can contact us. We also have a website, you can see that right there. So feel free to look up more STEM careers, and there's also some really great free lessons there for you that you can check out to do at home as well. So I hope you are ready to do the How to Be an Engineer Engineer project and challenge. I will see you in a little bit. Thank you. Hello boys and girls, this is Miss Reese and I have my handy helper down there, Oscar. He's back with us. He's going to be helping us with our engineer challenge. And I told you that after we read the story, what do you do with an idea that we would be having a really cool hands-on STEM challenge for you, an engineer challenge. And so I'm going to show you the materials that you will need for that challenge. Are you ready? Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So first you're going to need some eggs. Then you're going to need two sponges. You will need either rubber bands or some hair ties. Two paper towel rolls or some toilet paper rolls. You need four toilet paper rolls. And I know you're gonna be excited about this. <laughs> some marshmallows, and then scissors and tape. Remember to use the scissors safely, please. And so I just wanted to show you the materials that you need so you can go ahead and pause this video and go find those materials in your home. Maybe grandma and grandpa have some of these materials or a neighbor as well, but collect these materials and then you can come back to see what we're going to do with them. Welcome back boys and girls. I hope you were able to find these materials throughout your home. If you could not find a material, you can perhaps check out your local dollar store. That is where I purchased my sponges as well as my hair ties. And I forgot to mention earlier that you will also need a piece of cling wrap or saran wrap. So if you need to pause this video again to go find a piece of cling wrap, you may do so. You also might need to ask an adult for help when it comes to tearing a piece off, just for safety purposes. So go ahead and pause this video and come join me once you have found your cling wrap. I'm going to start by taking an egg and I'm going to wrap it with my cling wrap. Why do you think I am wrapping my egg in the cling wrap? Hmm. Why do you think I would want to wrap it? I want you to think about that as you're doing it. Maybe you're following along with me or maybe you're going to try this later. So I am using the cling wrap to wrap my egg because if something happens to my egg, their eggs are very fragile. So if I happen to drop it or when I go to test my engineer project after I've created it and the egg breaks, I want the cling wrap, the cling wrap to be able to keep the egg yolk from getting all over the place because it can be pretty messy. So I have my egg wrapped here. Next, I'm going to take two paper towel rolls. Again, you can use toilet paper rolls if you have them, but I'm going to use the paper towel rolls and I'm going to cut them in half. If you need an adult to help you with this part for safety, feel free to ask an adult for help. So I have one, two, three, Four. So I have four rolls. I'm gonna cut a little bit more off this so they're all a little bit more even. And feel free to cut your paper towel rolls 
whichever size that you would like. Um, but you do want all four of them to be even. So I'm just gonna cut off a little bit more so that these four are all the same height. The fun part about engineer challenges are that you are the engineer, so you get to test out what size you want all of your materials. So those look pretty good. I'm gonna set aside the toilet paper roll because I don't need that. I have my four paper towel rolls here that I cut. And then I'm going to open my sponges. And you will need two for this activity. And I'm also going to grab some hair ties. Now I improvised the book so that you could use rubber bands. I could not find any, so I'm just using hair ties and I can use them for my hair later too. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to fill your toilet paper rolls or your paper towel rolls with marshmallows. This is also a super fun part. If you don't have marshmallows, you could perhaps try some cotton balls. Um, tissue paper, tissues, toilet paper, whatever you can find to improvise. And these are pretty sticky and gooey, so you might need to wash your hands after stuffing your marshmallows down the tubes. And once you think you have enough marshmallows in there, again, you are the engineer, so you can put as many marshmallows in your tube as you would like. Stop them in there, it's so sticky. And then I'm going to use tape to tape the bottom and top of my paper towel roll so the marshmallows stay in there. And you can use any type of tape. Again, you're the engineer, so maybe that's something you want to ask as you're building this. Think what type of tape would be the strongest or would hold my marshmallows in the best? So you can kind of look around your house to find what type of tape you would like to use. Or perhaps you will find something different than tape that you would like to use to keep those marshmallows in your tubes. So I'm just taping that. might need some longer pieces here. Okay, so I have it taped on the top and bottom. Now I'm going to do these three. So after you have your four tubes with your material, in this case marshmallows, inside with tape on both ends, and you have your egg and it's saran wrap, the next step, are you ready for it, is going to be this. And you can ask a friend for help with this if you need to, but you're going to take your four rolls <laughs> and you're going to put your egg in the middle of them and you're going to use some rubber bands and or hair ties to keep it together. So to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to think a little outside the box. I'm going to keep my rolls here on the bottom with my egg. Then I'm going to put the other two on top. And then I'm going to squeeze as I place my hair ties over them. And again, this part can be a little tricky by yourself, so you can ask an adult or a friend for help if need be, but I want you to try on your own first, of course. Okay, once you get that first one on, it'll be easier to get those other ones. And the hair ties are nice and soft, so if they snap, it will be a soft snap. Again, you are the engineer, so I want you to think about how many 
hair ties or rubber bands do you want to wrap around your egg and toilet paper, paper towel rolls? I am going to test out four. I think that looks pretty good. But again, I want you to test out your engineer project however you would like. So if you would like to add more than four, go ahead. Now I have my sponges and I'm going to put the squishy part, I think, on the bottom. And I'm going to use some more hair ties. And I'm gonna use the hair ties. I'm gonna see if my hair ties will stretch down enough to the very bottom. I think you're gonna love this engineer challenge. It is very fun. Okay, so I have one hair tie. I'm going to try another one. Again, if it snaps, no big deal. I have extras. Okay. I also like how colorful the hair ties are. So it doesn't look like that sponge is going to be going anywhere. <laughs> and I'm going to add another sponge. Again, I think I'm going to test out the squishy part of the sponge on the bottom. So the scratchier, tougher parts on top. And I'm going to use two more hair ties for this part. And again, try this part on your own, but if it's super tough, oh, that one snapped. You can always ask someone for help. All right. So let's see if I can stretch my hair tie again to the bottom. This might be too Long, we'll see here. Excellent, we got that one on. Okay, now one more. <laughs> Hopefully, this one does not snap on me. if it's gonna fit, we're so close. There we go. All right. <laughs> so yours might stay upright. Mine looks like it's not gonna stay upright by itself, but that's okay. So you can see that that egg is pretty squished in there, but once your engineer project is complete, and you have made it your own, maybe you use something else other than sponges. Perhaps you added some more rubber bands or hair ties. So yours might look a little different than mine and that's okay. Now this is the fun part. We're going to kind of look around our project to see if we want to add anything else because our goal with our project is that we want to keep our egg safely inside of it. So when we go to drop it, we want our egg to remain intact. We do not want our egg to break. So remember, we have our egg in here with saran wrap or cling wrap. And then we stuff these tubes with marshmallows. We have our sponges. Is there anything else that you might want to add? You might even want to decorate it if you'd like. You could add some tissue paper or glitter or whatever fun materials you have at home. But now we get to test it out. So for your engineer challenge with your engineer project, I want you to try dropping this three times. So each time you drop it, I want you to you can either take it apart to see if your egg's in it, or you can just continue dropping it three times in a row. And then you can take it apart to see if your egg is still intact. Okay, let's go ahead and test this out. Okay, so I have our little STEM helper over here, Oscar. He's gonna watch our testing session. So when you are an engineer, once you have designed and created your project, you have to test it out, right? To know if it works, if it needs improvements, if there needs to be something that needs to be fixed. 
And so we are going to go ahead and test out our egg dropper. Are you ready? We have to do it three times. One. Here we go for a second. Are you ready, Oscar? Two. And the last one, three. Now you can test this out in your backyard. You can test it maybe from your window <laughs> or you can test it in the house as long as there's a spot. I'm using a tablecloth in case it gets a little messy. Okay, so let's go ahead and open our egg dropper. I'm gonna open up the hair ties. Take off the hair ties. Take off my sponges. What do you think? Do you think your egg or my egg is going to be safe still? We're going to find out soon. So if you do take yours apart and your egg did not stay intact, I want you to go back and revise your design. Think about what you could improve, what different materials you could use, and rebuild your engineer project and then go back and retest it again. Make sure you drop it three times. So I'm opening mine up. I don't know if you can see my egg. Looks like, I don't see any yolk. My egg is still intact and there are no cracks on it either. So my engineer project worked. My engineer and design and my plan, it all came together. How fun is this? So I would love for you to try creating a little egg dropper at home. This is such a fun engineer project and you can do it with friends. You can do it with your brothers and sisters, but I would love to see your final results. You can share those pictures or videos with me and hopefully we can share those on our next video. Thank you so much for joining me and have an awesome day.